It's not every man that prays that has the horn to make people travel with prayer. In fact, there are some people, if you say they should lead prayer here, will we'll sing throughout. <laughs> Hallelujah. It, there's no authority in that area. So don't try to be like someone else. Find your horn. Please help me tell your neighbor, find your horn. What is that thing that receives authority when the anointing of God is operating on your life? If you stand in that place, you cannot be wrong. Once upon a time, I noticed that. I noticed that. Uh, when people read the Bible, I see so many things in it. Then when the preacher preaches, I say, oh, the preacher didn't see this thing. Ooh. And I didn't know that it was the teaching anointing that was making me see it. I thought it was natural. Then when I realized that, oh, it was an anointing. And I knew that I had the anointing to teach. What I did was that I spent years studying the Bible so that I could deploy that anointing on a very strong magnitude of excellence. I invested in it. You see, the area of investment ah, that you will get the quickest results in terms of ministry is in that area that your anointing is situated. So I started studying the Bible. Like today. Meanwhile, the way I study my Bible is not the way you study. No. When, my, when I begin to move like this in the house, eh? I do, I'm just moving. I'm studying. No. Um, it's one scripture that I'm trying to crack. I want the anointing to begin to teach me. So I know what to do. It's time to walk. It's still the Bible. If you greet me, I will say, okay, how are you? But... Every single day before I stand here, I do that work. Because I know how revelation comes. I know how to receive the word of the Lord for the season. I know that anointing. Because in that area, I have authority. You see me walking around. I'm looking for the mind of God. I'm looking for it. Because one of the evidences that the anointing is at work is that the anointing has capacity to teach you. When you notice that, that you are being taught, it's teaching you how to talk, it's teaching you how to arrange the scripture. Start with this one, go this way, and then come this way. When you notice that there is, there is a teaching spirit at work, it is the anointing because that's one of his manifestations. I will keep moving around until I begin to receive inner teaching. It means the anointing is at work. Even if you are a warrior, God will teach your hands to fight. There is a way to fight. And it's the anointing that is upon your life that will orchestrate that kind of teaching. So that when you come and you begin to do that which you have authority to do, it will be evident that the power of the Spirit is behind this thing that this man is doing. We went for a conference and the preacher said, God has revealed mysteries to him. And for two hours, we were trying to hear the mystery. him and revealed mysteries and that's what he wants to teach for two hours we were still looking until the time finished you see don't <laughs> it was obvious that God did not meet him it's not advertisement your own verbal advertisement that is the matter if there is authority you don't even need to say it the anointing. Ah, you are empowered already. When the anointing is at work, oh, good will begin to happen to people. And I stayed 
in that teaching for eight years after eight years the lord now came no after 12 years the lord now came to me and say my son teach now huh? i said okay okay these 12 years what have i been doing what is it that i've been doing for 12 years now you come to me some of you to say i want to add you now say teach now jesus i was not i didn't understand the meaning of that but you know what from that time that jesus said teach now i now had the authority to establish doctrine you see that's a skill that not every teacher has when you have the skill to establish doctrine it means you number among the wise master builders A more clinical aspect, a more technical, clinical, and sensitive aspect of responsibility in the order of that anointing was now deployed to operate. I walked in that for a while. When I walked in it for a while, the Lord came again. He said, Now, I will open the door to the prophetic anointing to you. I've seen my life change based on anointings. Because it's the anointing that is at work that will give you the authority that you control, that you command, and it will be the basis of the kind of good that can result from its oppression. And as long as you remain faithful, God will be adding adding and adding those days when i was principally a teacher if i wanted to lead prayer i would take a scripture and say according to this scripture this is the counsel of god so let us pray that this and this should happen i was praying like a teacher when the prophetic anointing came the prayer changed i can actually see what to pray about it's no longer the teaching anointing of preaching. It's something else. And it has its own brilliant way of bringing prayer points. There is someone in this auditorium. That's the person God sent me to. A new anointing just opened in your life. And you have not yet gained full mastery. You are not understanding what is happening. Because the operations of this new anointing look strange from the pattern that you are used to. And so, you do not understand what is happening. God has sent me to you. And you are going to receive an impartation that will bring understanding to you. Because the thing about anointings is, you need to know, you need to receive the sign from the Holy Ghost that is setting anointing is in operation you need to know the sign that it's in operation are you with me there is a sign for every anointing when an anointing is being administered there is such a sign that the holy spirit gives you so that you know that that anointing is beginning to operate the reason why you need to know is because there are certain levels of yieldedness that is needed to wield anointings. For those of you that operate in the power gifts, you know that when God wants to do some power things through your life, He gives us many feelings. You feel somehow, you feel, and then you begin to master what the Holy Spirit is saying by those signs. So that when you see the sign, you are sure of what can happen. It means there is a certain anointing that is operational. Your, your administration can shift just because you know that that anointing is functioning. But the bottom line is this. You are therefore empowered to do good. Hallelujah. 
So the first thing I want us to understand is when you notice that you are in the midst of so much pressure and wicked people have arrayed themselves against you, just know that the next thing that is going to happen is that God is going to anoint you. It is through the anointing upon the life of him that knows oppression. If you have ever known oppression, God is likely to anoint you so that you can have compassion of people that are oppressed. He will use the anointing that is upon your life to disentangle that situation that is bedeviling you and because you have experienced oppression before, it will become a, a reason for you to latch on to compassion. Anytime you see someone oppressed and that compassion will become the trigger that will make demands on the anointing. The moment the anointing begins to operate, God will give you a sign. Did you get that? Oppression. Oppression. Not every oppression you pray about that God will take away instantly. Because some of them are designed in order to, to, for God to release a deposit upon you. But my horn shall thou exalt like the horn of a unicorn. I shall be anointed with fresh oil. Number two. So one of the things we need is to watch out for the authority of God when it is activated. And you need to know what aspect of your life carries the authority of God. It might be singing just like Smith. It might be prayer just like a, a Bike. I like praying when he prays. When he leads prayer. I like praying. I hide. As long as he's leading prayer. I forget the time. It's just wonderful. There's an atmosphere that is created that makes it very conducive to gain ascendancy in the spirit. It's an anointing. It's an anointing. When you see someone that has that kind of anointing, it is very likely that God has called you to raise intercessors. Because you have something that compels people to pray. So you need to be a very good student of the move of God in your life so that you will know what the grace of God on your life does. I have the calling of an apostle. I passed through the office of a teacher before. So I know the teaching anointing. I was ushered into the office of a prophet. So I know the prophetic anointing. I began to function as an evangelist. I also know the evangelical anointing. Hallelujah. So I can tell you one or two things. One thing, I've said it before. When an anointing is in operation, it begins to, it teaches you what to do. What to do. What to do. Secondly, when an anointing is in operation, the Holy Spirit gives you a sign. He gives you a sign. Now, I need to teach us about this sign. At least the one that operates in me. Uh -huh. Let me. It was the Holy Ghost that taught me that if you want to go into the prophetic anointing, get an, a music minister. Get someone on the instrument. And let the person play strings. He taught me. I know Benny Hinn ministers like that. What I'm doing is not copy. I was taught. This is how I was taught. And it is not everybody whose anointing needs a ministry. But this is my own. Right? If I turn the mic over to evangelist Joe, Joe Great, he may not need, but that is how his own anointing works. So I can't stop my own teaching and adopt his own method. It won't work for me. So you need to be a good student of the workings of God in your life. For instance, I want to generate a sign. So he said, if you want to move, you ask the ministry. So, we're going to sing this song two times. He who dwells 
in the midst of the cherubim shine forth he who dwells in the midst of the cherubim shine forth he who dwells in the midst of the cherubim shine forth shine forth he who dwells in the midst of the cherubim shine forth oh my god he who dwells he who dwells he who dwells in the midst of the cherubim Shine forth, shine forth, he who dwells in the midst of the cherubim. Shine forth. Now, now hold on. See, I have this sign now. This sign is on this finger. When I worship God and this finger becomes heavy, then I know that God has sent me angels. Right? I was walking in this as my only sign for many years until my spiritual eyes popped open. The angel I saw, I actually saw his leg very clearly here. When anointings operate, you will be given supernatural ability. It's not about you, it's the anointing. Do you understand it? <laughs> he who dwells <laughs> in the midst of the shine. This is what you do. Maybe when you pray, there is a sign that comes to you. As long as you don't know the meaning of that sign, it is not powerful. The moment you know the meaning of the sign, it becomes powerful. And there is no way you will walk in power without signs. Power and signs go together. The reason why I've not spoken to tell you this case, this case, is because I'm still waiting to find out why God sent that angel. I'm still waiting for God to because the anointing teaches in the midst of the cherubims shine for he who dwells in the midst of the cherubim shine for see Kaburama, he who dwells in the midst of the cherubim, shine for. So I see something like a crown, and I see a young lady, and this young lady has been speaking to God, seeking God's face about a certain issue with fasting, and it's as if there is no feedback that is coming. But I see the angel with a crown. And I asked, Why are you here with a crown? And the Holy Spirit speaks to me. And he says, This crown is for understanding. Now, this lady is going to be given a crown. And God, through her dreams, is going to begin to reveal the things that she's seeking from Him through night visions, dreams. And the moment she sees them, because of the deposit of the crown, she will be able to understand. So that's why the angel came here. And if what I'm saying is true, if what I'm saying is true, then it begins to happen. I've not started ministry. I'm just, this is teaching. I'm teaching. 